wir kommen zur Katja. Katja. Äh, so, we'll start with Katja. Katja changes transportation. That's what she she wrote about herself. A very uh, uh, general uh, error that many people make uh, that will be going electric tomorrow, everyone. And that uh, is going to mean that everything's great uh, and we can continue like we are. And that's not how it works. And the reason for that is going to be given by Katja. Katja, the stage is yours. That's very smart to have someone from Austria have the introduction for me. Thank you very much. I am giving advice to the uh, Austrian uh, Climate uh, Ministry. So, obviously, it's insane that we have almost 50 million uh, private cars and we can just change the, um, the, the, the motors. Uh, so, first, I'm going to give you a bit of an inter input and then uh, I want to uh, have a discussion with you. I'm learning every day. I like to learn. And in the last 24 hours, uh, it's going to be quite uh, exhaustive uh, because of things that happened over at Twitter. So I'm uh, happy to be here now. And what you are seeing now of the presentation is kind of the where we are. And the thing that is actually terrible is that the um, transportation sector hasn't changed in the last 50 years uh, in terms of climate change. So if you look more closely, uh, does the changing of motors uh, actually advance us? And that's of course true, but the uh, numbers are also pretty bad. Uh, households, agriculture, everyone uh, gives their um, part for the uh, climate crisis. So um, thanks to the CDU party, uh, we uh, weren't very uh, successful. So now my hashtag that I uh, established, auto correction, Auto correction doesn't mean that I uh, think that cars are stupid. But what is transportation? What is behind transportation? What is behind mobility? So if we look at the fact that more people own a bicycle than people that own a car, it's very interesting because it means that a lot of bicyclists probably uh, in the basement used uh, because people don't feel safe both in the cities and uh, in the country. So, Changing the motor doesn't necessarily uh, help. What is a space requirement? If we look, of course, shared uh, mobility forms are winning. But in Germany, uh, studies show that only 10% of uh, cars are moving. Most of the time, but this is also shown by the right graphing, uh, cars are just standing around. Most are not used during the week, mostly only on, on weekends. And I think we have to look at that. Why is that? I for a long time had a lot of anger. I have a driver's license. I've used car sharing and um, I've asked myself why are they just standing around if you're looking around in a city you can you can see uh, look at the cars that are standing around as a mobiliar that are only standing around because uh, whether you're stressed by it uh, because they're everywhere if we look at that you can see shared mobility is very much advanced for also with uh, uh, also, uh, how little space a uh, pedestrian is needing. This is uh, the most uh, not looked after group, because this is the first thing we do as a newborn uh, person, it's the first thing we do. And this is also a big moment for parents when we learn to walk. But uh, it's something we have to unlearn because uh, it's very dangerous out there. There are children during 
a week, they only go from a closed room to another room because uh, parents are so scared. So I'm not uh, making fun of SUV parents because I'm looking at uh, what is making them so afraid. There are fewer and fewer children that can swim and uh, ride a bike. So how did all of this start? I looked into history. What kind of mobility uh, is cheap and uh, uses little space? What uh, does make it more independent? And that's the uh, bicycle. And these pictures make me smile. Because before, uh, uh, before the car came, the bicycle made it possible for women to uh, move about. So, uh, because uh, you didn't have to ask a man or, or your husband to uh, be uh, on the go. They were on the move. They uh, carried their transparents everywhere, their posters. And this uh, transport mode has been pushed away by, um, by more male-used uh, uh, transportation. And the uh, cause of the past, this uh, sadly has to be said that this started with the Nazis, also Volkswagen is out of that time. And in the past, the money-earning uh, husband, this has been the most, uh, the, the morning traffic that's uh, most important, uh, like going to work, and we have uh, also uh, reported that uh, uh, by, with, by building the car-friendly city, a lot of things have been uh, demolished in order to allow cars to drive past faster. I recommend uh, discussions also in my uh, d uh, podcast, Hermann uh, Knopfler, in my podcast, uh, podcast and he talks about uh, vir the virus car and people are in the car they are getting angry because they're not getting a parking space in front of their house because they don't get uh, through the uh, red, uh, the traffic light and it's strange because we're not only driving the car and so here this is something that uh, we are observing and also in the city centers they have also been made car friendly large they build a motorway in the city that divides the city, and that still is uh, relevant today. It's very hard to correct for, and we got used to that, that this is the way it is. It's not about quality of life. It's about, or it used to be about uh, people allowing people to drive through, which means that people that actually live there uh, weren't the priority. And this is something that I want to address with my autocorrect. <laughs> so, uh, while talking uh, just before this talk, uh, I was uh, mentioning that I am living about a quarter of uh, my life I'm spending in the countryside. So, uh, people tell me if Hamburg is uh, so much stressed, then uh, just move to the countryside. But it's not uh, less stressful. Uh, when I have to do something like, for, for my parents, I have to do chores, uh, I have to do it by car. The, the, the public transportation, the, the, the buses, they, they've been cut back a lot. So it's no longer possible. Uh, so we are all stressed out by each other. When we are walking on the uh, sidewalk, when we are uh, driving the bicycle, we are all um, stressed out by each other. So we, we see this uh, discussion about e-scooters now. The, another mode of transportation was added to this uh, already uh, small space. So of course we're all stressed out. So uh, people tell me your ideas are very great, but on the countryside that's not happening. But if you look at the, so countryside isn't uh, really the number of people living there. It's just a feeling. It's the you, you're missing fast internet. You're missing good public transportation, and stuff isn't uh, available uh, by foot. What I want for us, uh, even though people 
think that I am just someone who hates cars. Here's uh, what I want. I'm talking about community mobility. I like to talk about that because when I'm on, in the countryside with my parents, I see how all of society relies on uh, their children or children's children uh, to take care of the mobility for their uh, for the older uh, for the elderly. So the society just assumes that this is the solution. And I actually believe that we should go back to where we were before cars, because it didn't come over us like a natural catastrophe. So now we have a lot of problems, not only uh, climate change, but also a problem of um, so in interviews, I noticed that people were forced to do stuff with their car. So people just respond, oh, you can go by your car. There's 13 million people without driving driver's license. There's another 13 million that are too young. So these are 26 million people who can't decide for themselves whether they want to drive a car, they just can't. So a lot of accidents are happening with uh, young people who just uh, got their driver's license and uh, with the elderly because they don't have any uh, alternatives. Uh, they have to drive even though they are not in a, their, their health doesn't really permit it. This is my mantra. And you have to think about that. For me, this means if you want to drive a car, if you really love it, if you feel freedom driving a car, then I'm not going to change you. It's something that enriches your life. But if you're going by car because you have no other alternatives, because this is the only mobility you're granted, then the society should give you some sort of alternative. And I also think that Corona and the pandemic uh, showed us that it's very easy to lose jobs to, uh, and, and then we're too, too sick maybe to drive a car and then what happens? Uh, in interviews, people were, uh, were wailing. They, so I'm, I'm asking, do you want to or do you have to drive? So they were only starting then to think about uh, how their individual mobility is, is uh, incentivized. So, and only through my questions, they noticed this. And that's, I think, what people want us uh, to think. But we should uh, question this. Who's behind this? Why do we want a car? Why do we need a car? And what are the... Uh, uh, things around it. and the FDP who's the transport minister now he put up a 10 point uh, plan for the transport revolution uh, he wants to put up a, tra a, a, a speed limit and it's important uh, to address this and also inclusion was uh, present in this plan and I'm gonna be the loud voice to uh, hold, they always hold this up also with um, uh, meat prices. Also, of course, poor people have to do their every day with the car, but it would be nicer that also a, a, a woman has told me with three kids, I don't have to decide, do I have to fill up my car or my groceries? I think these are decisions that haven't uh, don't have to be done in Germany That's, uh, for a highly developed country like us. So how do we do this in a human form? So, like a, a Scandinavian uh, city design, uh, we are far away from a human a city design. So uh, 50 uh, kilometers per hour is the speed limit in cities. So, uh, uh, humans are walking much slower. We don't even recognize how uh, a room is designed. If you drive in a city, uh, you've recognized for the first time how uh, does, what does it look like to be in a mobility minority. And people in Copenhagen don't uh, drive with the bike because they want to be uh, eco-friendly. They have uh, get advantages. Um, so what, how can we get uh, that people don't die because of traffic? Uh, today, every day, eight people die because of uh, car traffic. And this 
B beside, uh, from every uh, fatality due to traffic incidents, 130 people are affected. And this makes me sad because this is unusual that uh, traffic incidents happen, and this is also happening, and this has also happened in Scandinavia, uh, Oslo, Helsinki. They have a goal to, and this is serious, and it's also uh, achievable. What does it mean to prioritize our car traffic? And also, this is also something I learned from my interviews. The, it isn't the worst, uh, the commuter uh, traffic, but the three-time traffic, leisure traffic. I, I, I learned about a woman that uh, travels 20 kilometers to meet her children and they don't even want to uh, judge that. We've gotten into a situation with the car that stresses us because uh, every day uh, uh, the everyday commute hasn't uh, changed, but the, the distances have changed because uh, the car has become faster and uh, life quality is something for me where we have to become slower. We want to get quality locally. Why do we need to travel? Because the city is stressing us. Then this should also uh, improve uh, life quality locally for the people. And we get really quickly to this factor female mobility. And I'm not only talking about women. And I talk about a lot of, uh, I also talk about men uh, that uh, want to do care work, but, but there's also mobility back to this, the mobility of, of males. The mobility is for women. They have a part-time job. They have to uh, uh, provide women, uh, uh, their children. And we have to recognize that we, uh, we've made steps back because of the pandemic, because we came back into old role pictures. Also, women have uh, shortened uh, work times. But this female mobility to this doesn't happen statistically, because it's not paid for. Because it's something we also have to allow. I don't know who of you ladies also thought why do you have to put my seat all the uh, way to the front and and I have this um, it's not mandatory uh, for women bodies to have that as crash test uh, dummies so women it has been shown by this book uh, cars are uh, for male bodies uh, they're I've learned this recently. This also applies to biking. In the past, there hasn't been a female uh, seat for bikes. Uh, women in pro professional sports, they have had uh, injuries and very uh, sensitive parts because this mobility hasn't fitted them. I think it's right to look uh, at the majority and also from males I've also rolled up this discussion again by the expression by Jen Estemir. I've uh, shown these charts. We well, talk about uh, so-called token. So we take one of we take uh, one person. You can't see it from the slide very well. So people who have uh, very little money have the uh, least amount of cars. These are from the uh, the German uh, ministry that is responsible, so they are very unlikely to um, uh, create fraudulent numbers here. So if you look at the people who are threatened by poverty, they are uh, one of the greatest uh, groups in uh, public transportation. So this also the 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 amount of um, <clears throat> the amount of money they make uh, they also investing into their car uh, and the bullshit bingo if we had a car free uh, city then everyone's going to be broke that's not true uh, have been shown on several levels that uh, people who are walking and uh, going by bicycle are spending more money because they are staying longer, they are driving and they can see things and then stop. 
and uh, in the car that's not easy, easily possible. So you have to uh, go with the uh, traffic flow. Together with a 50 uh, kilometers per hour limit, it kind of makes you blind to your environment. So let's talk about solutions. The top right, you see, it's a study from the OECD that uh, four uh, forecasts can be replaced by uh, a shuttle, autonomous shuttle. These exist, they are currently using a driver, but assume that they are uh, always driving. Uh, and they pool data, uh, so it's possible to uh, uh, have people pooled into one car from the suburban area. They're, they're being brought to the next uh, uh, um, uh, to the next. Uh, yeah, so to the next station, right. So this is uh, possible to uh, have that on demand. There's an algorithm there and you have a profile, uh, someone who needs assistance, for example, uh, and then the algorithm um, remembers that and uh, plans more time that you need uh, for, for changes, for example. Um, on the bottom right, uh, uh, no um, a taxi uh, in uh, Münster is allowed to drive without being um, uh, prepared for people who have special needs. So here, if you look at uh, this, this is the uh, printed bus. Uh, it's cars, it's, it's parts that could be from the German car industry, but they're not uh, doing this. There's uh, experimental space for several levels of autonomous driving. And I want to uh, caution against making everything digital because the subjective security is also very important. So I think uh, if you have core compet uh, competencies, such as uh, we can reach a lot, uh, we, we can do a lot, uh, if we take each other seriously, uh, 50 million cars doesn't mean that you have 50 million people who love car mobility, but our system is completely made for cars. It's of course, it's a safe space. Um, it's of course about societal problems. I, I want to uh, enable these people to be uh, going by car. And we can, um, we, we can reach a lot and now this is uh, the end of my input, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Okay, this was very impressive. I thank you a lot, Katja. This was a lot of information. I have to digest that. I have to admit, I have a question. I'm an old person, I'm 70, and I'm not really able to walk. I don't have to use a, uh, a wheelchair. Hello? Katja, hörst du mich? Katja is rausgefallen. Oh, Katja has defaulted. I'm going to ask the question. I'm sorry, we lost Katja. Oh, now she's back. Katja, can you hear us? Shit happens. Yeah, wem sagst du das? So, also, the Entschuldigung. Here we go again. Here we go again. I have a question. I'd like to go to Hamburg by train. That wouldn't be a problem. And with some money, I can afford a taxi. That's somehow possible. But if I'm poor, I already have no possibility. And um, if I talk to the German train that I need help, 
to be in a wheelchair uh, compartment, even though I don't have to sit, uh, have a wheelchair, then if the train is cancelled and then I'm standing on a platform with my luggage, and I have no no options uh, to get to the point. So the the so solution is not really there yet. I'm not the only person who's excluded. In fact, it's a very important point. I talked to Kai McQuarrie, some of you may know him. He's working uh, all over Europe and he is wheelchair bound for over 20 years. And he says he uh, doesn't realize he's using a wheelchair. He built himself a bike so he can drive a bicycle. And once he enters a train, he wants to uh, use a airplane, he realizes that uh, he's being um, uh, restricted. And he said, I'm very angry. Uh, so I said, well, okay, I'll uh, accept that. I'm optically healthy. I'm not really healthy, but it looks like it. And I'm very happy that there's a lot of constructive anger by these people. And in the last TV formats, I, I was a guest, I realized that a lot of people who are young are not uh, looking after this, and they're not addressing this. And my book is trying to make the invitation, uh, try to look, don't, don't change your mobility or, or car mobility, but look at those that you're leaving behind. So not everything is made on is done on purpose but andreas scheuer a former uh, ministry of transport didn't have any uh, women didn't have uh, someone who are uh, visibly um, um, uh, special needs and if those things are missing it can't work we have a long way to go we'll take an in a question from the audience. Will we need a driver's license in the future? I've grown up with a bike and a moped and with 18 uh, driver's license. Is that still this way today? Fact, a lot of media uh, weirdness is happening. So people are saying, well, the new generation isn't uh, completing their driver's license. That's not true. But in the younger generation, it's still over 90%. But people are doing it later in their lives because it's expensive. It's also something you have to be able to afford. So from the interviews I did again, uh, a lot of people didn't get uh, the job they wanted uh, because they didn't have a driver's license, even though they could use tra public transportation, but the uh, employer said, well, that's not safe enough for us. So uh, the driver's license is some sort of uh, license to access the society. It's the same thing like if you don't drink alcohol uh, at Sylvester. Uh, why are you doing this? What is behind it? And I believe that today we are forming the future of tomorrow. And that's especially true uh, in the uh, countryside. Uh, so we have to make preparations for when we are in that situation. For example, if we don't have the money, if we are not healthy enough to drive. So I realized that when I talked to the uh, transportation minister in Baden-Württemberg, uh, they, uh, they have a, a one hour of forced uh, information about car sharing when they make their driver's license. So he said, it's obviously, so, I'm, uh, so there are some people who uh, uh, are completing their driver's license, but they don't want their own car. So we have to have these bridges uh, to uh, in, in some sectors. But uh, letting go of car mobility can be a real win. Are there any efforts to make a public transit more attractive? You talked about Leonore Gewessler with her Austria ticket. She's an, uh, an example. Transport agencies, there are even more in Germany. Is there something happening? 
So currently happening is the so-called Deutschland Takt, uh, where um, trains and other forms of transportation are being synchronized. So sometimes you uh, go by train somewhere and then you have to wait 45 minutes for your connection uh, for the bus. And in my opinion, when I'm sitting on a train, it's very easy to uh, be be angry at the trains uh, when when they're late, for example. But uh, cars who are congested, that's not uh, as often. So there was a statistic that uh, men from Munich spent more time uh, in traffic congestion, uh, con congestions than with their kids. And that's one of the examples where we are so devoted to cars. Uh, so some people spend so much time in traffic jams, I, I couldn't bear that. So we need uh, civil society to uh, demand certain things. So I was, of course, um, skeptical when the uh, transportation ministry uh, was assigned to the FDP in the new German government, because they're not very uh, known for um, addressing public transportation. So back in the uh, past in, uh, the, in Eastern Germany, uh, about 40% of train tracks were uh, put out of service. And I'm always looking to Austria um, and I'm uh, somewhat envious. So, I mean, it's not completely true. Some things uh, aren't being built, for example, tunnels aren't being built, uh, because people decided we don't need that for a climate neutral uh, future. So we have to re-envision uh, where we're going, but I mean, traffic drives traffic. That's how it is. In Austria, we also, for example, don't build uh, nuclear power plants. So this is costly, and I think this would also help. With the planning, I notice, uh, shouldn't we be more radical? Why do all uh, ha schools have to start at eight? Uh, why do all offices start at nine? Why do you have to? Uh, why do I have to go through the term at half nine so that my uh, employer wants for me to go to sleep? Uh, what does happen here? Do every does anybody even think about? It? Sure. The problem is that everything is fragile in the way that it all depends on each other. In the street I'm uh, living in. I have a uh, school, and when people start their school, uh, I always feel for them because small uh, women and children, boys and girls, uh, are uh, being forced to go very early uh, against their biorhythm. So this, this nine to five, that's from the time of industrialization. So it isn't really related to uh, the new jobs that are based on, on knowledge. So in the Netherlands, there's you have a right to home office. I think uh, uh, if you have 26 employers or more at your place of work, uh, employees, uh, and that of course means that the employer also has to uh, provide you with a uh, uh, office. So uh, my idea, so for example, bringing co-working spaces to the countryside. So the em employers should talk to each other. How are people uh, coming? Where, where where are people coming from to our place of work? Can we combine them? Have like one day where they all come uh, to to socialize? That would also uh, empower people to uh, create other forms of living together in cities. Paris is uh, aiming for a 15 minute. Uh, uh, City, so that you end up with uh, quarters that are um, healthy. And routine is very uh, neighborhoods that are healthy. It's very hard to change routines. Standing in front of the Elb Tunnel in my rented car, I think, oh, what could I do with all this time that I'm losing right now in the traffic jam? I can work, sleep, walk around, go to the toilet in a train. It also works. Uh, German 
train the grid. Yeah, it's not only the uh, Deutsche Bahn problem in Germany, it's also the uh, connections. Do we have a comfort problem? Yes. And it starts with the uh, at the tables uh, of um, uh, ministries, and it also ends at the tables uh, at home. How do I uh, have my transportation today? It's it's all about routine. It's uh, if you have some sort of routine, you don't have to think about it. Uh, the our brains use forty percent of the energy, and we're trying to minimize the energy usage uh, because we're all a bit Neanderthals. But I'm not addressing this anymore, but I believe it's clearly part of uh, the uh, change of transportation that uh, we know that our cars are um, bad for others, but we don't care. I was uh, next to I was talked with a journalist in, in Hamburg, and he was laughing uh, when I was standing next to these uh, absolutely uh, huge va camper vans, because you're looking like a dwarf, and how, how, has, uh, how, how does a child feel standing in front of these monsters? What kind of uh, consequences does my comfort have for others? The thing with the status symbol should be easy to solve, but it doesn't have to be that way that the cars are uncomfortable. Um, if early, uh, in the past it meant that uh, large cars is more, are more comfortable, but the question arises uh, if the transport revolution happens, uh, do cars have to become smaller or more comfortable? Uh, what, what happens? But that's uh, something that the market changes. So if people request it, then uh, this is going to uh, lead larger and larger vehicles on the cars. Smaller electric vehicles, for example, aren't supported. There's a small car, the, the Piccolino, uh, and with this car you have a very high uh, position uh, with a seat in the car, similar to an SUV. And that doesn't work in Germany because it's uh, done by Swiss people. You don't have any. If we don't have any German cars in the same segment, we don't get any incentives. Then this is the thing: follow the money. There's great documentation about the diesel scandal. I think those are things. I think uh, there's good uh, lobbyism done, and how little we are questioning whether the status quo is something that's naturally happened or whether this ha happened because of policy. We're getting to the end. I want to ask a provocative question. We have the opinion that are uh, things that are uh, no, uh, necessary for uh, everyday th uh, life. Uh, we should uh, uh, take that away from private sector. We did that with the post or with transportation. We didn't do that with the internet. So, for example, in uh, rural areas, the internet is very slow. Should we do car sharing? And should we take that away from the car industry? I believe that the largest problem is with Volkswagen because uh, Niedersachsen, one of our states, is uh, uh, they, they are invested, financially invested, and the question is how independent can decisions be in this case. So this is why I used the uh, community. 
in, in, uh, in my presentation. So I believe that the amount of money that we have to uh, put into cars, there's a, a lot of uh, costs that uh, are subsequent costs. The, this is also the people who are uh, killed, unfortunately, by cars. And I don't really understand when people say, I, I've, I've been living without a car all the time, and I'm wondering what's what's in it for me. I mean, I'm feeling like a better person maybe, but I don't get anything out of it. And uh, a woman in wheelchair told me in, an, uh, in the interview, there's devices, uh, she can drive on it with the uh, wheelchair, it converts it to kind of a moppet, so it costs 5,000 euro, and she doesn't get it. But who gets 9,000 euro? People who buy an, an electric car. So I'm, that's what I'm asking. Why does this person not uh, get one of these uh, supporting devices that, that solves so many problems for her while we are spending so much money for uh, electric cars? If you ask critically, the 5,000 thing uh, euros that this costs, uh, 3,000 euros goes to different channels. <laughs> so we could change that. All right, we're getting to the end. Maybe we go into a breakout room. But one last question. You already mentioned it. What can we do? What can an individual do? to help with the auto-correction. I have to do this. Uh, I, I'm, often, I'm, I'm often involved in, in weird fights. Uh, I have, I, I'm going to do on, on my website a page where you find solutions. Uh, where I have made some uh, research and, and it can grow. Everybody can, uh, can, can uh, get involved. There's going to be a public page. Uh, what you have to do is look for people who uh, have the same opinions, who uh, come together with you. And this has uh, a great importance uh, for your uh, idea of self as well. And I have in my uh, neighborhood a lot of SUVs, Range Rovers, a lot, a lot of people who uh, work in the woods apparently. So the, this, uh, trees are having a problem um, because their roots are being parked on. And so a small uh, girl uh, did a small fairy garden around this, this tree because uh, the, it's where people were uh, parking on the roots. And, and the dude, and it was a dude, I, I know, so I can say that, he doesn't park there anymore because he uh, doesn't want to drive onto this uh, cute fairy garden from this little girl who destroys that. And that's uh, the, uh, one of the extreme symbols I've seen where how, how little it actually takes to change routines. We want to have a nice neighborhood and parking on the roots of trees doesn't belong there. All right, thank you for this talk. I'll ask for a virtual applause.